As future tutors, you're all, you've all just watched my class. You observed it. You haven't really seen a class like that before, have you? No, Any no, of you? No. And you're going to be trained as tutors next week. <laughs> um, what are some of your impressions, first off, of the people in the class? What are your feelings? Well, my, well, my first impression was that they actually seemed to have a level that I didn't expect them to be at. They, they can read now and uh, write and comprehend quite complicated words. Uh, I had the idea that we would be working with absolute beginners. Some of you will. There are also other classes that other people will be observing where people really are low-level readers from zero to second grade level. This class happens to be about third to fifth grade reading level yeah. is what it's considered to be. I've always been uh, amazed at how a person learns how to read, you know, because I myself, when I was growing up, all of a sudden it seems like you're reading and writing. So how do you learn how to read? And uh, it's a complicated process, and it's a subconscious process, but when you do it as a small child, it's very natural. And here in this class, you see the steps, which is interesting to me. Very. Complicated, isn't right. it? Adults it learn to read. We don't even remember how we learned to read. Right. It was so organic. Right. It takes so much time and patience now with adults. Let's take so each of the major things I did and, and um, analyze it's why I did them. Education. Usually, I'll do something for reading comprehension. That I, my main purpose in reading is not worrying about the words. I'll give them whatever words they miss. For example, that article on um, the study. So I'll talk about that, have them analyze it, talk about the relevance in each of their own lives to that kind of subject matter. It's called Generative Themes. Well, this is an article. It was a long study. Study on black kids. Preschool pays off. What's a study? They studied something before they went to it. Uh-huh. How many of you? You had kids in preschool? Grandchildren. They're all grown. Were they ever in preschool when yeah. they were young? I went to school when I got two years old. Uh huh. Preschool. Do you think it was helpful? Yes. Do you think they benefited from it in the long run? Yes. How? Well, they really, uh, you know, when they got the first grade, they know a lot of things. So it gave yeah. them a head start? Uh huh. Do you plan on putting your child in preschool? Yeah. Why? <coughs> to take a learn. Okay. Well, you know, it used to be that you didn't, you were a bad mother if you put your kid in preschool. You're supposed to stay home with your kids, isn't that true? That's true. No. I did. You stayed home and you wouldn't have dreamed of putting your kid in preschool, right? Seven of them. Seven of them? Mm -hmm. Did any of them go to preschool? Why not? Because I was home. Well, is your daughter home now? No. And she's working. <laughs> now people are trying to put their kids in preschool. Okay. Well, I want to know if you think the study, all of you, as we read this, do you agree? Do you think this is true? Do you believe this? Estelle, go ahead. Researching who have studied, researchers who have studied a group of 123 poor black children from what? <laughs> Ypsilanti, Michigan. Ypsilanti. Michigan for the past 22 years said their finder showing concludes conclusion conclusively con conclusive of that it pays society to expose youngsters to head start and s small smaller similar similar, similar preschoolers program at an early age what does it mean when it says that the study shows conclusively that it pays society to expose youngsters, what do they mean by that? I think that they will get better 
would get a, a head start and they'd be more advanced because maybe the mothers don't have time to teach them what they would learn in head start. That's interesting. Margarita. Thirty-eight. 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 Mm -hmm. um, percent had a curly had in, enrolled. enrolled in the college or a post secondary secondary vocational vocational school compared with twenty one percent of the con control groups. What does it mean fifty nine percent? Fifty nine percent of the population. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a line here. This is zero percent. What would go over here? Twenty. No, all of it. A hundred. One hundred percent would be here. What would be right in the middle? Fifty percent. Fifty nine. Fifty. Fifty percent would be right so in the middle. A little bit more than half. Yes. Val, the next one. Only, oh, only 18 percent of the uh, preschool group were on welfare, compared with 32 percent of the others. Okay, so kids who had been to, to the preschool program, there are many fewer than what? Welfare. On welfare. What's the saying? Do you think this is an important study, or do you think it's not that important of a study? My grandchildren that's coming up now with a study like this, they would be more interested in putting their children into preschool because they could see that if you start them in preschool, they will get more. They'll get a foundation mm -hmm. in preschool. Okay. One important result of this study is that if people read it, they'll put their kids into daycare, mm -hmm. into preschool. Right. All right. What's another result? Maybe some other people wouldn't want to give their money away so other kids could learn. That way, these kids would be, like say, almost like slaves, you know. Uh, you know, work pushing the broom all the time because, you know, they're always going to need that. So maybe, you know, people are also against other people, you know, advancing where they're at. So uh, maybe that, too. That's true. On, the purpose of doing prefixes mo and roots is mainly for vocabulary, mm -hmm. not for pronunciation. Mm -hmm. I happened to look through that article. I was looking for some kind of prefix or root. I thought, pre, great, I'll use that. I looked them up in the dictionary last night, got a list of ones that I thought were good and, and, and used them. It was very simple to do. Before something happens, you can tell it. What is a prefix? Hmm. Prefix. Something Where? add to another word. No. Yeah. At, on to the end or before it? Before. Before. For example, what's the prefix of this Pre. word? Pre. <laughs> Pre meaning before. Premature. 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 Baby come to full time? That's right. A premature baby, a preemie, comes before its time. Just got this from here. There are a lot of different ways to do spelling. The way I'm doing it right now is off of what's called an adult functional word list. It's in the back of the tutor book well, that you'll get right. for training. It's your about 500 basic words that adults use in everyday life. I'm just taking them from the A's and going on down, give them about 20 words a week. Very much. <coughs> okay, for Thursday night, the next section right here. And um, let's just go over any ones that you don't know. First one? But. But. Butter. Butter. By. 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 Okay, what's the difference between those two buys? One is. Buy. When you buy something, when you buy something the is a B Y. Bye bye. Actually, it's uh, buy now. Yeah, buy now. Call. Call can. Can. Car. Care. Face. Calls. Uh huh. Like I. 
the cause of some. Okay, after spelling, we read the contract. Reading contracts, warranties, things that you have to do, that kind of thing is all considered uh, functional reading. Because it all has very technical language on it that if you read it enough, you get very used to it, to whom it may concern, that kind of stuff. And you can pull out a lot of good vocabulary from it. Um, at least, what does it say? To who it may concern. What's that mean? To somebody. To who? I don't know to who. No. To anybody who what? Mm. Oh, um, I don't know that word. Project? Project reader. Yeah. Or to anybody who it might concern. Anyone who's interested, this is a letter. In other words, it's a letter to you. Oh, okay. Or it's a letter from, put it this way, it's a letter from you to anybody else. Okay, go ahead. I, and say it's print your name, hereby give my permission for the use of me, my image. Image. Image and voice in the... What does image and voice mean? Put you on TV and what do we see? An image. image. That's your right. image. Right. Right. The black and white ver well this I think this is gonna be in color, but <laughs> <laughs> the image that you see. Probably how much money they got. <laughs> Go ahead, continue reading. And voice in the vi right there. Yeah. vid. Huh? Vid. Vid do tape. Videotape. Videotape to be project. Project? Pro. Pro. Produced. Oh, produced by uh, M. Adair. Adair? It's his last name. Adair Films mm -hmm. for the San Francisco Public Library and for its sub. 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 Yeah, Val, what was that one? Uh, some of those words in that contract you take for granted, but people don't know exact definitions of words like that. Try to pull it out of them, sometimes write it down. In this case, my goal is not actually to teach a syllable rule, but to just break down words a little bit and be able to go through mm -hmm. them, just as a review. Mm -hmm. The reason to do syllables is more for pronunciation, to be able to sound out the word. What's the end of this word? Tape. Tape. Very simple. Now, how do you know how to break down this part? Vid, vid, eo, tape. Now, even if you get confused here in the middle, remember like we were talking about last week, there's sometimes these little vowel things in the middle that are confusing. But just try to get vid, means a short I, video, tape. You get vid and you look at tape, you'll get videotape whether you knew it before or not. What's the beginning of this that you do recognize, Joseph? Doxy. Pro. 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 Produced. Produced. Sub. Se. Quent. Subsequent. Subsequent. Remember what that means? The subsequent use of the videotape? Later use. What's the beginning of this again? I guess the charts and graphs, reading maps, that kind of thing is all considered uh, functional reading, general reading. So look at how this is called a multi column title. That's what this is called. So, in other words, look how it keeps breaking down. There's a large title, right? Winter Clearance Sale. Then under that, there's two titles. What are they? Jackets, jackets and mittens. and mittens. And then under jackets, you have two more called uh, nylon, nylon downfield, and wool. and wool. Okay. And then each of those are broken down further. So you keep getting more and more specific each time. A lot of tables are like this, where you have to look for specific information. For example, on the left-hand side comes what? 
sizes. Sizes. Mm -hmm. And the sizes range, what's the smallest size? Extra small. Extra medium, small. Small. Small, go ahead. Medium. Mm -hmm. Large and extra large. And extra large. Multi is a prefix that means what? A lot. A lot. Many. Mm -hmm. And columns. What's a column? A section. A section. Does it go down or across? Um, section. Of these tables here, does the column come down, down. or do columns go across? Down. Across, down. Let's have a vote. Down. Down. Al, four. Does, does it cost more to buy line on or wool men's in size, in size, size large? It cost more on wool. What is filled with down? The nylon jackets or the mittens? Okay. The nylon jackets or the mittens? You have two choices. So where are you looking? Look up here. Jackets and mittens, mm -hmm. right? After nylon, it has yeah. what they call, goes like that, right? What does these parentheses mean? All this is is describing nylon. What kind of nylon jackets? Ones that are down filled. Down with a dash, a hyphen, filled, means filled with no, no, down, no. feathers. Now with the writing, in this case, I chose to dictate something simple. If you dictate in your writing, choose something very simple, very short sentences, very simple words. Don't be hyper-corrective. Don't overcorrect when they're writing. The main purpose of writing at this point is to just to get them to write. I'm going to dictate three sentences to you. Oh, I shouldn't have taken these up already. OK, now we'll pass them out again. OK. Number one. Put number one down. What two types of things are on sale? Mm. Write it. What two types of things are on sale? What two types of things are on sale? OK. And the next one is, this is number eight. In what, yeah, in what size can you not buy mittens? In what size, in what size, in what size can you not buy mittens? In what size can you not buy mittens? So make your corrections so that what I want to see when I come around is the correct form. I don't care how you did it to begin with. I want to see that you corrected it correctly. as a teacher to not over praise. When a teacher compliments you, it's a very powerful thing. Right. You don't realize how much power you have. You don't think about it. But when you think about your own experiences with a teacher, if she says, 
that's really good. Doesn't it lift your whole day, make you feel great? Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you overdo it, then it loses its significance. I have a style, you'll have a style, each of you. You'll develop it, you'll see it develop in yourselves. It'll be whatever style it is who you are, and also a style that's complementary to your student's style. In the training, you'll learn a little bit about each of these techniques that I've showed you. The spelling, the reading for comprehension, the functional reading, like tables, writing activities. So you'll learn all of those things very briefly, and then you'll experiment with them on your own. And it, you'll be surprised. After about five, six weeks of tutoring your students, you'll know what you're doing. You will. <laughs>